Okay, in this video we're going to do some more limits at infinity, but the new thing thrown in is going to be these radicals that are floating around in these couple of examples. Um, the idea, again, is still pretty much the same. You pick out the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, so I see an x squared, but notice that the x squared is underneath a radical. Well, if you take the square root of x squared, you're left with x. So to me, that's kind of what I see the highest power in the denominator being is x. So I'm going to divide every term by x. And I'm going to take a few extra steps on this one. So I'm going to divide by x. And recall, dividing by x is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over x. So I'm going to write this out the long way. And I'm dividing by x. Okay, so on the tops, easy enough, I can distribute this out. So in the numerator, I'll have the limit as x goes to infinity. If I take 1 over x times x, I'll get x over x, which is 1. Then I'll have 1 over x times 3, that'll give me 3 over x. And the next part is where we have to be a little careful because I can't just multiply the 1 over x underneath the radical. Recall that, however, though, if you have two things underneath a radical, so square root of a times the square root of b, and this would also be true if it was the third root and a third root, or a tenth root and a tenth root, it says you can basically stick them under the same thing. So we're going to use this little property to help us do some algebra down here. Well, if this thing was under a radical, I'd be in business. Well, I can't just write 1 over x, though, because the square root of 1 over x is not 1 over x. But the square root of 1 over x squared, that is equivalent to 1 over x. So basically, just take this thing and multiply it by itself, and that's what would go underneath the radical. So I've got x squared plus 4. I'm done on the top. You know, I need to keep it there, obviously, and keep rewriting it. But there's really nothing else to do there. And now I'm going to use this property over here that I can just multiply together. And you should think about the stuff in the square root as being in parentheses. So if I take 1 over x squared times x squared, I'll get x squared over x squared, which is 1. And then I'll get 4 over x squared. And now I can evaluate my limit. Just like in the other examples, as x goes to infinity, 3 divided by x, well, I'll have 3 divided by a big number. This term's going to go to 0. Same thing with the 4 over x squared. It's going to go to 0. And I'm left with 1 over square root of 1, which is just positive 1. And that would be your, your answer in this case. Let's take a slight variation of this problem. Pull out another piece of paper here. So let's look at, say, the limit. Let's do the limit as x goes to, this time, negative infinity. And how about we make it how about the square root of x to the sixth plus 4 over, we'll make it um, how about x to the, I don't know, third. OK. In this example, same thing. I'm going to pick the highest power of x in the denominator. Well, I see a square root of, excuse me, I see an x to the sixth under the square root. And what's the square root of x to the sixth? Well, if you forget how to do these, an easy way to think about it is remember a square root is the same thing as a one-half power. And remember, if things are on the outside, we multiply them. So we'll get 6 times a half, or x to the third. So I'm going to divide everything in this problem again by x to the third. All right. So I've got the limit as x goes to negative infinity. 
I'll have 1 over x to the third times x to the third in the numerator. I'm going to have a 1 over x to the third in the denominator. Then I've got my x to the sixth plus 4 still hanging out. Okay, on top, I have the limit as x approaching negative infinity. Excuse me, on the top, I'll have x cubed over x cubed, which is 1. My x to the sixth plus 4 is still hanging out over to the side. But this is where I have to be careful. Just like on the last trick, I'm going to make... I'm going to rewrite this underneath the square root. Well, again, the square root of 1 over x to the 6th is 1 over x to the 3rd. But something's a little different in this problem. And the thing that's different in this case is x is going to negative infinity. So the way I always thought about it is, OK, as x approaches negative infinity, this term well, if you plug in negative numbers, what are you going to get? You're going to get a negative number out. Well, if I take my negative number and put it in here now, when I raise it to the sixth power, I'm going to get a positive number. And then the square root of that is going to become a positive number. So before it was negative, but now it's positive. I'll still get the same correct numerical value, but somehow I've lost this negative sign. Well, what should we do? We should just throw the negative back in there. And now these two things are equivalent. 1 over x to the third is equivalent to negative 1 over x to the sixth, this 1 over x to the sixth being underneath the square root, only in this case when x is going to negative infinity. If this original term I was dividing by had been 1 over, say, x to the fourth, well, if I plug a negative number into 1 over x to the 4th, it would be positive. And when I rewrote this as 1 over x to the 8th, I wouldn't need the negative because it would still be positive just like it should be. So people sometimes get confused and think, oh, if I'm going to negative infinity and I do this, I should automatically tack on a negative. And that's not correct. If the original thing is negative, yes, then tack on a, a, a negative sign. If it's going to be positive at the beginning, don't use the negative and just leave it alone. Okay, so basically another mechanical way of thinking about it is going to negative infinity and you have an odd power, you're going to need a negative sign. If you're going to negative infinity and have an even power, you do not need the negative sign. All right, so let's keep going from here. Now it's just exactly the same as the last problem. You've got 1, my negative's going to hang out front. If I distribute 1 over x to the 6th times x to the 6th, I'll get x to the 6th over x to the 6th, which is 1. Then I'll have 4 over x to the 6th. And as x goes to negative infinity, just like before, 4 over x to the 6th is going to become 0. I'm left with 1 over negative square root of 1, and my solution will turn out to be negative 1 in this case. So this is the basic trick on how to deal with limits when there's radicals involved. Again, try to pick out the highest power um, underneath the radical. Do whatever the operation is. In this case, it was taking a square root. Um, and then again, remember to throw on negatives if they're needed. But again, that's something you have to think about. So. You know, that's the good thing about some algebra and some other things. You can kind of go through it mechanically once you learn the procedure. Limits, you can never quite all the way turn off your brain. So just don't turn off your brain, and you'll be just fine on these problems.